A few years ago, I took a beginner track racing class at the San Diego Velodrome, and although a cycling kit was not required to partake in the class, everybody in the class wore cycling kit, except for one person, me. I wore what I always wore, jeans and a t-shirt. Everybody there thought I must be a masochist for riding a bike in jeans and a t-shirt. I ride my bike a lot. Everything from grocery runs to multi-day tours to 100 plus mile rides. And I do so in my normal everyday street clothes. There's a time and place for cycling clothes, but they aren't strictly better than street clothes for riding. And I'd argue that most people are better off riding in their normal everyday clothes. In this video, first we'll compare riding in cycling clothes versus riding in street clothes. And second, we'll talk about why I never wear cycling clothes. And third, we'll address some common objections to riding in normal everyday attire and why they're not issues. Of course, clothing is a very personal and subjective thing. There are going to be a lot of <gasps> opinions in this video. So if you either agree or disagree with my opinions, let's have an intelligent conversation about cycling clothes in the comments. For steel bikes that weigh well under 20 pounds or nine kilograms that you can customize to be your dream bike right out of the box, consider checking out Wabi Cycles linked at the top of the description. For simplicity's sake, let's define cycling clothes as jerseys and cycling shorts and street clothes as pants or shorts worn with shirts like this one or t-shirts. Let's compare cycling and street clothes based on four categories, comfort, style, convenience slash usability and performance. Three things will determine how comfortable your clothes are, how much protection they offer between you and your environment, how breathable they are and allow you to cool yourself, and third, how well it fits. Both cycling and street clothes can offer similar amounts of protection. If you need more protection from the elements, then you just add more layers or cover up more. A layer of protection that's unique to cycling clothing are padded cycling shorts. These can keep your undercarriage from getting pummeled by your really uncomfortable narrow saddle. Padded cycling shorts seem like they'd be advantageous over regular pants, but these are actually a band-aid solution. If you're considering wearing padded cycling shorts because your saddle sucks, it's not your pants that's the problem. It's your saddle. You don't need shorts with a squishy diaper sewn into it. You need a saddle that fits you better. A lightweight jersey and cycling shorts will be more breathable than your standard jeans and a t-shirt. But if you shop smart, it is possible to get much more breathable and comfortable street clothes. Lightweight, breathable materials like linen that I'm wearing, lightweight merino wool and seersucker fabrics all wick moisture away from the body and allow you to stay fresh and dry and smelling good, similar to those synthetic materials that cycling kits are made out of. Both shirts and cycling jerseys allow you to moderate how much ventilation you have. Cycling jerseys typically have zippers and shirts. You can unbutton them if you do get too hot. For the fit though, it can be easier to get better fitted clothing for cycling with cycling clothing since they are designed specifically for the riding position and the specific movements that you make while on the bike. In my experience though, this only becomes an issue with especially baggy pants as the pants can rub against the saddle and tear easily. On the flip side, if you do get normal clothing, you can bring them to a tailor to have them fitted to best suit cycling. For most everyday riders, if you shop smart and get clothes made out of the right materials like linen, merino wool, and seersucker, normal everyday clothes can be just as comfortable as cycling specific clothing. Although a lot of cyclists claim to not care about this next comparison point, it does matter and that is style. In my eyes and in the eyes of most people, cycling clothes only look good in a very specific context, on your bike and with other cyclists. And while in cycling clothes, the greater the distance between you and your bike and other cyclists, the sillier you look. This happens a lot if you use your bike to go places and do things and live your life. But it's not so much of a problem when you're just riding your bike to ride your bike. On the plus side though for style, when everybody is in cycling kit on a group ride, it's a sort of uniform which can increase the sense of camaraderie. As for normal clothes, you can dress however casually or formally within reason that you'd like. And clothing can remain a functional form 
of expression for you if you choose to ride in everyday clothes. It can look good in multiple contexts, on and off the bike. You won't feel weird meeting your mother for brunch. You won't feel weird shopping for eggs because your roommate ate all the eggs. And you won't feel weird meeting a date at a bar before your commute home. And for more sarcastic reasons, less wannabe racers will challenge you to a race out on the bike trails. But in the event that you do accept one of their challenges, it'll make it extra humiliating for them when they lose to a fixie foo wearing a marijuana print shirt and ripped jorts. Some may argue that you can get the best of both worlds by wearing cycling clothes while you're riding your bike, then changing into regular clothes when off of the bike. Which brings us to our third comparison point, convenience. Cycling clothes tend to be more convenient on the bike, while normal clothes tend to be more convenient off of the bike. The extent to which this matters depends on how exactly you use your bike. Cycling clothes have nice touches while riding the bike. Things like jersey pockets in the back where you can put things like food and water so you can eliminate the need of bringing a bag with you on your ride. They're cut to be less baggy in the right places and the high quality stuff is stretchy in all the right places. But with cycling clothes, you either have to feel weird in public, change into normal clothes when off the bike, which can be a hassle, or just not care that with your tight fitting cycling kit, everyone can see your bulge. And by bulge, I mean your bulging stomach to get your mind out of the gutter. But if you need to change clothes when you get to your destination anyway, like if you have a strict dress code at work or you live somewhere that's unbearably hot, it can make more sense to ride in cycling clothes if you find it more comfortable. And that's the key. You have to find it more comfortable enough to justify that added layer of inconvenience. With the right clothing choices, you can be just as comfortable in street clothes when riding the bike as you are in cycling clothes, all while eliminating the need to change clothes when off the bike. I personally like to change into a fresh shirt when I get to my destination, but that's still more convenient than changing an entire outfit. But an area that cycling clothes wins, hands down, is our fourth category, performance, raw speed, and efficiency. If you race at a high level, or if you just want every single advantage that you can get to snag those Strava KOMs, tighter fitting cycling clothes will be more aerodynamic and more efficient than normal street clothes. But if you're in the bottom, let's say 95% of cyclists, let's be real. We're too slow for the drag from our clothes to actually matter in a way that we can appreciate. When taking a closer look at cycling clothes versus street clothes for riding, one is not clearly better than the other, but rather it depends on how you use your bike. For most people though, the right choice of normal clothing can be just as comfortable, perform just as well, and be more convenient for daily riding, i.e. not racing. That's why I never wear cycling clothes, unless of course you're counting a helmet and cycling cap but these are non-negotiables for me while on the bike. Next, let's take a look at what my needs are for my clothing and why exactly I choose to wear what I wear. My philosophy is that I don't change my life to fit into cycling, but rather cycling is just a part of my life. I always wear my normal clothing when on my bike. Clothing for me is important in the sense that it has to be useful, fit into multiple contexts and make me feel confident in all of the different situations that I'll find myself in across the day. On top of that, riding in my everyday clothes gets rid of one more barrier for just hopping on my bike and having fun. It helps me maintain the mindset that I can ride however slow, however fast, however short, or however long that I want, no matter what clothes I'm in. All I have to do is hop on my bike and ride, which helps me to fit cycling into my life and not fit my life into cycling. Starting with what I wear from the top, I have a helmet because accidents happen and in the unfortunate event that I do get into an accident, it's probably not gonna be my fault. Underneath that, I wear a cycling cap to keep the rain and my sweat out of my eyes because nothing hurts like getting salt in your eyes. And for my tops, I usually wear cotton black t-shirts, which I'll admit kind of suck for riding in the heat, or I'll wear 100% linen shirts. I exclusively wear black because if I could speak to you man to man for a moment, I'm a sweaty guy. I sweat buckets at even mild weather and I am extremely uncomfortable in this humidity right now. And black helps to hide the sweat and keep me at least looking halfway presentable. Black is hotter, but in my case, I wouldn't sweat any less if I wore white. I would just look grosser. 
I really like 100% linen shirts because they're light and breathable. They absorb the moisture from my body, which allows it to dry off and keep me fresh. And lastly, linen looks decent wrinkled and I'm too lazy to iron my shirts. Linen shirts are beach shirts, which makes them great for cycling. And I get them in black, which for me, makes it a perfect balance of class and function. For my pants, I wear jeans for fall, winter, and spring. And I also wear linen pants or lightweight wool pants all year round. As I've said before, linen and lightweight wool are breathable, moisture wicking, all of that good stuff for the heat. Moving on down, lightweight wool socks for the same reasons, and waterproof leather boots. With this wardrobe, I'm comfortable enough on the bike, and I feel confident in my clothes in multiple situations, all without having to change. Here are some common objections to riding in normal clothes and why they're not issues. Doesn't your groin and undercarriage hurt when you're riding so many miles in pants? No, because I have a comfortable saddle that fits me well, a really dialed in bike fit, and pants that fit me well. Normal clothes get really hot and sweaty. Cycling clothes are nice and cool. Why would you ever ride in them? Yes, regular cotton t-shirts and jeans can get really hot and sweaty, especially in the summer. The right clothes, though, get considerably less hot and sweaty. And if I'm getting extremely uncomfortable in the normal clothes that I'm wearing, cycling clothes wouldn't really do much to help. Right now, the Weather Channel says that it's 30 degrees Celsius or 86 degrees Fahrenheit, with a humidity of 91%, making it feel more like 37 degrees Celsius or 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit. Cycling clothes aren't magic. A day like today is always going to be hot and sweaty regardless of what you're wearing. Heck, I'm really hot and sweaty right now just sitting here. But what about normal clothes getting smellier than cycling clothes? My rebuttal to that is cycling clothes can get really smelly as well. Regardless if you're wearing cycling clothes or normal clothes, if the clothes are breathable and dry quickly and allowed to dry properly, they won't get as smelly as quickly. But cycling clothes are more pro and allow you to fit in more easily with other cyclists. One, I'm not a pro. Two, I don't want to be a pro. Three, I don't want to be part of a group that makes people feel bad for looking different. Cycling clothes aren't magically more comfortable no matter the situation. The right choice of normal clothing can be surprisingly comfortable while on the bike, allow you to fit in multiple contexts without having to change clothes, all while performing just as well for most cyclists. I hope that this video serves as a good starting point, but as always, do what works best for you. Question of the day, do you wear cycling clothes or normal clothes or a combination of the two when you ride your bike? Let me know why in the comments. Speaking of my bike and why I ride it, yeah, that works. Our channel sponsor, Wabi Cycles, is the epitome of what makes cycling fun. Every one of Wabi's design choices are meticulously made to give you the purest ride quality for the money. And Wabi executes those choices perfectly with master craftsmen right here in Taiwan and a friendly bike shop in Denver, Colorado that is eager to answer your questions and get you on a bike that you'll love. This amounts to efficient, elegant, and timeless bikes that you can get from a passionate group of fellow cyclists. Wabi's relentless attention to detail results in Wallace, my 58 centimeter Wabi Special, weighing in at 17.5 pounds or 7.97 kilograms straight out of the box. That's well under 20 pounds for a completely steel lugged frame set that has no carbon components. That weight isn't just for quoting and impressing other cyclists though. It results in the best riding experience that I've ever had on a bike with a snappy, responsive, and lively bike that only top shelf steel can bring. That pure fun makes it easy for me to ride Wallace my Wabi Special as my only bike as I travel throughout Asia. So if you're looking for the bike that could very well put an end to your search for the perfect bike, consider checking out Wabi Cycles linked at the top of the description because it really is the closest thing that I've ridden to the perfect bike. If you found this video interesting or informative, be sure to give it a thumbs up to make sure more people just like you can find it useful or give it a thumbs down if you think it sucked and subscribe to watch more fixed gear and cycling videos just like this one. And life is short, but don't make it shorter. So stop watching me right now if you hadn't ridden your bike yet today. Instead, ride your bike every day to be reasonably dangerous.